I want to see what Align did now with my chief complaint, which is the lower anterior crowding. I go to the mandibular and watch this. Okay, I'm not playing it yet. The first thing I do, I go to initial and I go from beginning to the end. So start, finish, start, finish. Okay, I will move this a little higher and I'm gonna zoom in so for you guys to see how are they getting all the space we need? So I go to the superimposition. I'm at the initial. And if I do the superimposition, see how it's all purple? Because that's the initial. Let's see the end. Huh. They expand from premolar to premolar to be able to gain the space. And let me go to the arch width table that I showed you. Okay. Look at the lower arts. This is my main concern. The intercanine distance goes from 25.8 to 27. The interpremolar distance goes from 30.8 to 31.5, from 33.9 to 34.1. It's not great, but now I'm starting to think, do I really want that? You're dealing with mm -hmm. a 40 year old adult. Okay. So in this case, I may say, I don't like that. I can go to new modification. Watch this. I'm entering now the 3D controls. Okay. First thing I do, let's say I don't like my premolars being expanded. I'm going to right click and say, make tooth unmovable. Mm -hmm. This will bring the tooth back to the original place. See how it's all purple now? There is no movement. This is the movement for that particular tooth. For example, if I click on the first premolar that I haven't made unmovable, see, there is movement on that tooth. I can click, make it unmovable. See, now it all went to zero. Go on the other side. See all this movement? If I don't want the expansion, I can make it unmovable. So first thing I do, I lock my lower posteriors. Okay. Now I go to the canines and I'm thinking maybe I don't want to expand the canines. Okay. I'm not going to make them unmovable now, but watch this. I'm clicking on the tooth. Okay. And I'm going on the translation back a lingual and I'm going to bring it back towards the lingual. So I'm going to grab here. It's the back lingual translation that I want and I move it back. Now I'm closer to the original point. Watch this, I'm only 0.3 buckle, but now I have the lateral out of line. So what if I get the lateral now and I move that back? Watch this. Now I'm getting the alignment I want. What if I go then one two at a time and I bring them back so I can maintain the alignment? All of a sudden you'll see I'm starting to have some IPR being introduced. See that point two? This is now the process that tooth by tooth you have to do to even incorporate what you want to see done instead of a line telling you what to do. Let's say I want to force IPR. The interproximal, I can actually click and say, add IPR between lower left two and lower left three. I can have point two here. I can have add IPR between the centrals. Add IPR here, see what it does, how it finishes my alignment. But now I have 0.2 IPR throughout the contacts. At the end of the day, you're in control and don't accept what they give you just because it looks nice on a clean set. Because I will tell you, even the few modifications I did here, if I undo my superimposition and you look at the original and you look at the final, I can argue that this is a lot more predictable. And even though I'm introducing some IPR, I'm actually decreasing the inter canine expansion and I'm using my arch width table to guide me.